Today is a very exciting day because we're buying a tractor. A couple weeks ago we ordered the tractor and it's ready and now today we're signing the papers and we're doing the orientation. So we are at Essex Equipment in Essex and uh, here we have Chris Coleman and you said that's our tractor. This is your brand new tractor. That's awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the whole tractor from front to back, mm -hmm. giving you a basic understanding of how to operate your tractor and also how to take care of your tractor. Yeah. Um, so that way, when you go home with it, you know what you're doing, you That's know, awesome. as best we can. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we are paying full price for the tractor and this is what you're doing with every customer, right? Yeah. Every customer that comes in, we need to go through the whole tractor with them. It's more or less for a safety standpoint because these things are unbelievable tools, but they can be dangerous yes. if you're using them improperly. Yeah. So just a few tips some safety and then we can get you running. We'll yeah. deliver your tractor today. That's awesome because I've never driven the tractor before, uh, apart the one time that we were yeah, here to try it out. Um, so I'm very looking forward to yeah. actually learning Definitely. about it. Awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the front. Okay. Okay. So what we did with your tractor is we did weld three hooks uh -huh. on the front. Yep. When you're using these hooks, they're great tools, but you do want to still center your weight because if you're picking up a, a 18 foot log and you're doing just the corner hook to here mm -hmm. and you're lifting up, yeah, it may do it, but you can find yourself tipping with the tractor. Okay. So what you want to do is still, even though you have three hooks, center your weight in your bucket. Okay. Just be safer for you. On the back here, we have a two lever quick coupler. This is pretty much industry standard. All but one manufacturer doesn't do this. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's Kubota, if it's Land Pride, you can buy anything you want, any manufacturer, and they've got this assembly. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is if you wanna hook onto like your set of forks that you guys purchased, mm -hmm. what you're gonna do is come right up to the front. I always keep my feet clear of the loader arms just in case if there's down pressure okay. and you release, they can come down yeah. on you. So what you wanna do is just step up, pull this up and you can see it dropped a little bit mm -hmm. and then it's released. You'll come over to your tractor what you can do is just start your tractor. And then you're just gonna raise a little bit and curl down. And you can see it comes right off your tractor. What you're gonna do is you're gonna drive into any implement you want. And all you're trying to do is get this lip hooked under here. Once you do that, you can pick it up. So you come back over. Now, it's never going to be as easy as I do it right now because I didn't move the tractor. Mm -hmm. So you're always going to come in on a little bit of an angle. Just bump it okay. and it will straighten itself out. Okay. So what you're going to do is just curl down and then pick up. Once again, I always put a little pressure in the front. So whether or not you're doing forks or your bucket, a lot of times I'll step on here and push down and it's on. Okay. What you're gonna see is right down here, those pins going into that notch. You know you're locked in. Right here. Yeah. So that goes into the hole and locks it. Okay. You wanna make sure your pins are in the holes because I have seen it where some people think they got it in and then they'll un they'll bounce and unhook and it can tweak it. Okay. So just make sure you're good in, in it. Okay. You never wanna leave your buckets up in the air because if you're ever walking around the tractor, it's a good way to hit your shins and cut yourself up. So for safety, you always want to keep your bucket on the ground as best you can. Now, what we'll do right now is we're going to jump into um, your engine compartment. Okay. And we'll go back to your loader when we get you up on the seat and you can see what all the handles okay. do. Okay. So to get into your engine compartment, you're just going to move this pin out of your way. Mm-hmm. Slide it forward. And then underneath here, there's a ring. So you'll pull this ring straight down and it goes up. Now, if you have snow or something on top of your hood, you're gonna have to lift it a little bit, mm -hmm. but it will spring up for you. Now, you do not need to be a gearhead to own a tractor, That's okay? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not one, but the way Kubota designs these, your engines or your battery is always in the front. Uh -huh. That way, if you ever need to jump start your tractor or if you need to change a battery for you guys, if you want to pull your battery when you're not on your property, it'll be easy to access. Okay. Okay. 
I will tell you what I found is the factory batteries are probably one of the best uh, okay. that I've seen go in the tractors. You have a serviceable air filter and how that works is diesel engine, it wants to breathe. So what you're gonna do is you're just, you can just open this up and open this up, slide this out. If you have an air compressor at home, mm -hmm. you can blow from the inside out. Okay. Just never into it because you're packing the fibers. Uh -huh. So you can blow it from the inside out, even just tapping it off lightly on your leg or you know, side of the tractor tire mm -hmm. is fine. Just don't beat it. Okay. All right. Um, just keep it clean. The cleaner you keep this, the better everything runs. And if you keep this clean, you don't have to replace them as often. And what level of dirtiness do we need to replace? This it? is going to turn gray like the first week you have it. Okay. All right. Now, what I'm talking about is when you see like grass and leaves and everything okay. else packing this, get that stuff out of there. Um, they put these on here. So if you do get dirt and what and leaves and debris in there, you're supposed to be able to pinch this and it cleans itself okay. out. Don't do that. Uh, just take it right off, wipe it down from the inside and just throw it out, you okay. know, and then put your air filter back in. It, you know, just doing that simple stuff that I show you today mm -hmm. is just going to keep it running really well. And then putting it on is probably the trickiest. I would do it when the engine is cool, mm -hmm. you know, so you're not in here working around something hot but it's just clip, clip, and it's on. On both sides of your tractor, you do have these little rings right here. So you pull this ring up and you're able to pull this screen out. You can pull the screen halfway and then halfway, mm -hmm. or you could have your loader arm up. I'd much rather you do it halfway and halfway. Okay. That way you're not working with a loader up in the air. Mm -hmm. But keep this clean. Okay. Because if you have grass, if you get into like brush hogging, you kick up a lot of grass, this will catch before it gets into your radiator. Mm -hmm. So this can get gummed up as well with grass and debris. So just keep that clean and then just slide it back in and it locks itself into place. Okay. Okay. To show me again, how do you unlock it? Lift this spring. Once again, it's better when it's cool and then just pinch it and pull oh, it out. Okay. And then just slide it back in and let the spring lock okay. it. That way it just can't vibrate yeah. out. Your alternator's right here, okay, on the side. These pl these plastic shrouds do come off if you want to get closer to your engine. Okay. Oil dipstick is kind of hidden, all right? It's right here. They got a little paint on it. I would put some more paint on it. Oh, um, so that you can see. But it. this is your oil dipstick right here. Okay. What I'm looking at? <laughs> um, so oil level right here? You so wanna... I've never owned a car before. So okay. this is my first vehicle with a motor. <laughs> all right. So. What you want to do is when you, uh, you want your engine to be, you know, not running, let the oil go back into the system. You just pull your dipstick. Okay. So now you don't have any oil mm -hmm. because as the engine's vibrating around, you'll get like oil all the way up here. Okay. So you can see these two lines right here and here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an acceptable level of oil okay. is in between these two lines. Take a rag, just wipe it down. So now I don't have any oil on it put it in and then pull it right back out. And you can see mm -hmm. your oil now comes up to here. Yeah. So now you're in your acceptable level for oil. Good. So you know you're good. Okay. And what kind of oil does it take? I have to look that up in the manual. Okay. Um, but this isn't, it's not gonna burn oil on you. Okay. So like every 50 hours, oh, I see. Um, you might wanna give it a check. I recommend like every 50 hours, just walk around your tractor, mm -hmm. okay? And check your fluids, check your air filter, check your screen, mm -hmm. general stuff. I mean, you're not twisting wrenches and things like that. This tractor's over 26 horsepower. Mm -hmm. So it being over 26 horsepower, you're gonna have a DPF filter in it and that's a diesel particulate filter. Okay. This is the diesel particulate filter, is a can. There's heat sensors that come off of it. Mm -hmm. There's actually screens inside this can. Mm -hmm. And as the, the admissions run through your tractor, before it can leave your exhaust, it runs through this can. Those screens are actually catching the debris before it can leave and get out in the exhaust. Okay. Now what happens is, and there's a lot of misinformation out on how this works, okay? When those screens get clogged, 
these heat sensors right here will read that they're off three or four degrees of each other and mm -hmm. it will trigger what's called a regen. It will want you to burn the soot and debris off from your tractor. Okay. Okay, so let's jump up on the in the cockpit and I'll actually show you how that works, okay? okay? So we'll just close this up, which is just slamming this down, closing that up, mm -hmm. okay? I'll have you get on the tractor. We're kind of jumping ahead, but what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how that regen works mm -hmm. on your tractor. So what will happen is when it's time to do a regen, and it's all written right here in case you forget. Okay. You're in the middle of the woods, you don't have your manual with you, mm -hmm. it's all written right here. Okay. But what will happen is this light will come on that looks like a poof of smoke, yep. right? And then also this arrow light is going to come on. Mm -hmm. That arrow is telling you to bring up your RPMs. Okay. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is bring up your RPMs to around 2,500 RPM. At that point, you can still use your tractor, you can still work your tractor. It's just gonna be burning off the soot mm. and debris from inside your can as you work. Okay. All right, now some people don't like to run their tractor at 2,500 RPMs. You can let it sit if you want to, but you can keep on working. Okay. After about five or 10 minutes, depending on how, the temperatures and the debris that's in it, the lights will just turn right off. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now, there is a way to bypass your regen. And why would you want to do that? Well, if you had a customer that was coming up to you and they wanted to talk to you, you don't want to rev your tractor mm. up in their face for the yeah. next five or 10 minutes. So what you can do is you can hit this button right here. Uh -huh. This button will cancel your regen. Okay. All right, it'll just turn it off. All right, uh, another reason you might want to do that is say you've been working your tractor for a while and you're exhausted, you wanna be done with tractor mm. time. The light came on, it wants you to do a regen. Don't just turn off your tractor when it's time to do mm. a regen. Hit the button, cancel it, and the lights will go off and just turn off your tractor. It will come back on like automatically the next, time? The next okay. time you're running your tractor okay. um, and do your regen. It's important to keep in mind, do not hit this button consecutively more than three times. It needs to do a regen. Okay. If you hit this button once and you canceled it and then it came back on, you did your regen, fine. But if you hit it, you canceled your regen, the lights come back on, you cancel your regen, it comes back on, you cancel your regen. I have to come out there, plug in, turn on your tractor and say, <laughs> we're going to do a park regen. We're going to fix this right That's now because okay. it doesn't want you to break it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a fail safe, so you okay. can't damage it. How often that might happen? They won't, uh, you don't get a, a true like hour meter on it because it depends on temperature. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you've been running your tractor. Okay. So if you're somebody who has like a brush hog or a power implement on the back of your tractor, you're up here around 2,500 RPMs anyways. I see. At that point, you're generating enough heat where it actually burns it off as it goes. Okay. The people who are, are like going out and plowing their driveway, they start up their tractor, it's freezing cold, they mm -hmm. go run it for 10 minutes and they put away their tractor. The tractor's really never gotten up to heat. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you're gonna see more lights coming on, but I would estimate like 50 hours, okay. you know, but it really depends on how you run mm -hmm. it. There's no right or wrong way to run your tractor. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, what RPM should I be at? It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. As you use your tractor more often, you're gonna find yourself using more RPM because you want things to move faster. But in the beginning, just mm -hmm. go slow, go yeah. what's comfortable to you and we'll, we'll go over that. This second button right here, let's say that customer left and now you know you're gonna be running the tractor for the next, you know, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You can actually engage a regen okay and do it right then and there when it's convenient for you if it was up to me don't play with these buttons you know <laughs> when the lights come on the arrow light comes on throttle it up to 2500 rpms the arrow light goes off five or ten minutes later this uh, the poof of smoke light goes off and you're done okay so just run it you know and you're fine okay. so run it until it go light goes off yes okay. yeah you always run it until the lights go off where people get into problems is they let them run halfway through the cycle they're turning their tractor off and the system's not really knowing what's going on with it. Okay. So lights come on, crank it up, 2,500 RPMs. If you don't feel comfortable running it, just let it sit for five minutes. And that's your, that's your regen. Mm -hmm. We go over it in great detail because we're not gonna hide that there's a $2,000 filter in your tractor. And also if you know how to use it, you yeah. don't have problems with it. Yeah. It's the people who don't know how to use it that have issues with that system. Mm -hmm. So let's go through what all the handles do. 
Okay. Um, and what all the levers do on the tractor. Uh, this is a clutch. You're gonna only really need your clutch for turning on your rear PTF. Okay. Okay. So at that point, you'll push in your clutch, turn on your rear PTO, let off on your clutch, and then I always bring my rear PTO up to RPM at that point. So that's if you had a brush hog or okay. a tiller or a powered implement on the back. Right here, you have three gears. You have high, medium, and low. I always say highway, mowing, and loader <laughs> um, is what I do. So high is just like you're done work. You want to move your tractor around. Mm -hmm. Okay, it really doesn't give you that much power. It just gives you more speed. Medium, that's a good working range. Enough power, enough speed. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a happy medium. But if I'm really trying to work my tractor, like you explained your property, has got a lot of hills, you're in the woods, I'd be down in, in low. Okay. You'll get more power out of your loader. You're gonna have a lot more power, like low end power out of your tractor as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be in low range when I'm working. I'll be in high when I'm done work and I'll just move it out of the way. Okay. Um, if I'm out there plowing snow or uh, brush hogging, I might be in medium. Four wheel drive is this lever right here. Mm -hmm. Pull up and you're in four wheel drive, push down and you're in two wheel drive. Okay. Now, when you're in four wheel drive, you're really in two wheel. Four wheel drive is just one back tire and one front tire. Mm. And it's a limited slip, so it's looking for the least resistance. That works great if you just needed a little more power, like a little more traction in snow, whatnot, it's fine. Um, if you're gonna be in the woods, maybe you wanna be in four wheel drive, having a little more traction when you need it. What I really like to use a lot is right here, this foot lever is what's called a locking rear differential. What that does is it locks my two back tires together mm -hmm. and they will work as one. Yeah. These have a lot of weight in them. They're a lot bigger. It's a lot more powerful. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to push something back and I need a, just a little bit more traction, what I'll do is I'll take my foot off my throttle my tires will just stop. Mm -hmm. I'll step on that and then I'll drive and I'll use that extra power to either push something harder, to pull something out that's mm -hmm. you know frozen in the ground, okay. maybe walk up a really steep hill. Okay. Um, I'll be using that a lot because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have my two back tires. In two wheel drive or four? Either one. Either one. You know, so a lot of times I'll do locking rear differential before I do four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. You know, if I need to pull like a tree out of the woods. Yeah. Because once you break the tree free, uh -huh. you're not pulling so hard. Yeah. So I don't need all that extra power to just take my foot off the locking rear differential and drag it out. So it's, I need to hold it? You do need oh. to hold it. Okay. So just imagine when uh, you, you step on that, you're marrying these two tires in together like this. Okay. And they turn as one. Uh -huh. So if you're stuck in the mud and you have one tire viciously spinning, don't step because you're going to grind down. Okay. Okay. You need both your tires to stop. You'll lock them in and you go. Okay. When you don't need it any longer while you're moving, you can let go because you're just, they're both moving at the same speed mm -hmm. and you're just mm -hmm. taking one off of power. Yeah. Okay. But just never engage while yep. you have one Makes turning. Sense. Okay. But you can use it as you see fit. Yep. Um, pulling trees. A lot of times I just need that little bit extra yep. power. Walking up big hills, a little extra power. Pushing back a snowbank, a little yeah. bit extra power. Okay. I'm using that. The most misunderstood knob probably on a tractor, and it's on every single one, is right in between your legs right here, this dial. What that does is, let's say you had a, a rake on the back of your tractor. Mm -hmm. A rake is kind of one of your lightest implements. You'll notice when you raise and lower your three-point hitch, it goes down and up really slow. Uh -huh. What you can do is you can turn that and it will make it go faster. I see. All right. So you can release the pressure faster and drop it, mm -hmm. drop it quicker. The problem is, is when you gauge it for like a rake, then you hook onto a brush hog that's uh -huh. heavy. Yeah. You'll notice it slams on the mm -hmm. ground. So you can turn that dial and make your brush hog okay. and heavier and implement go up and down uh, faster or slower. So right here, this is your throttle. A car, you push on your gas and your RPMs go up, mm -hmm. right? With a tractor, you set your RPMs and you work within that range. Okay. Okay. So I always start trying to start my tractor at a lower RPM. When you're starting your tractor on a colder morning, uh, winter time, you've got a glow plug on here. You'll turn your key three quarters of a click and you'll see this light come on right here. Mm -hmm. That is actually heating up. 
So this one, it goes off automatically. So when that light goes off, you're okay to start your track. Okay. Right. So in the winter, it might be a few minutes? Not a few minutes. It's going to be like uh, five, 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. okay. So no, never a few minutes. Now, in the dead of winter, if say it did ask for like 10 seconds of warming, and you go to turn your key and it goes ah, 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 like mm -hmm. that, like it's 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 trying to start, just stop, do it again, and it will heat for another like 10 seconds, mm -hmm. and then you can start your tractor okay. right up. It should always start just like that. Okay. Um, but if it doesn't start immediately like that, just give it a go through the cycle one more time. We'll give it a little more heat. Okay. And it'll be good to go. So it started up our tractor. Your parking brake is on, so it's showing you that. Mm -hmm. um, this is your throttle. So this brings up your RPMs. Now, as I said, a lot of people ask me where to run my tractor. Mm -hmm. It's wherever you feel comfortable. So if you notice, like I turn on the tractor and I'm at a super low RPM. This is going up and down, very, you know, up and down very slow. Mm -hmm. All my functions are slower. Mm -hmm. Now, if I give it a little bit more RPM, more power, you'll notice things are moving a lot faster. Okay. Same thing when you're driving your speed, you'll be able to drive faster. But for you in the beginning, operate where you feel comfortable. Okay. Because your loader is mostly muscle memory. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you have a diagram right here that tells mm -hmm. you what to do, but your loader is gonna be more muscle memory. Yeah. So just work at, at you, where you see fit. What does that PTO mean? So this yellow mark for your PTO, a lot of your power implements, brush hogs, mm -hmm. tillers, they require a 540 spin on your rear PTO. Okay. This is telling you where you've reached that 540 okay. spin. So it can be higher than that? It needs to be at least that? You want to be right here in oh, the right. yellow. Okay. Um, and trust me, when you get up to... That's like your 540 spin. I wouldn't really want it much louder than that. That's where you need to be for your rear PTO. But I mean, for you using a loader or driving the yeah. tractor, you can be anywhere you want. Okay. All right. You may run it differently than I run it, mm -hmm. but it's because I have more hours in the seat. Yeah. I always tell people, the guys who make these look like an extension of their arm. They're definitely not smarter than you. Uh, they don't have an extra set of thumbs, <laughs> but they have 40 hours a week in a seat. Mm -hmm. So you get really good at something when you do it, yeah. or, you know, over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Same thing with you with a tractor. It may be herky-jerky when you first get it home. You know, you're going to want to find an area of your yard that you don't mind doing some damage to. Yeah. It sounds like you got a lot of area yeah. that you don't mind doing some damage <laughs> to. But get out there and just get used to it. Work it as you, as you see fit, and then you'll get better and better. And in like a week, you'll be able to fix all the damage that you've done, you mm -hmm. know, and go back and do yeah. it. Down here your brakes mm -hmm. okay i just turned off your parking brake if i want to set my parking brake i step i lift and i let go and my parking brake is on so you do one foot there one foot there or you use your hand okay. yeah you can use your foot you've got smaller feet than me so you can probably <laughs> get your foot in there but i just lean forward and lift it up with my hand okay. if i want to take it off i simply step mm -hmm. and my brakes are off okay let me try that so step lift let go no, yeah. Lift, let go here. There you go, oh, now it's okay. on. Yep. Now, on this tractor, you do have individual brake pedals. Mm -hmm. So if I take off my brakes, I can lift this yellow bar. That yellow bar is locking the two mm -hmm. pedals together. Now I can brake either side of my tractor. Okay. So if I step on this, I'm gonna brake the right-hand side of my tractor. Okay. If I step here, I'm gonna brake the left-hand side of my tractor. When is that useful? So what it's used for is if you want to do tighter turning in the woods. Mm. So what I can do is I can break this side mm. and kind of spin my tractor around. Okay. It also helps for plowing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm plowing, a lot of times I've got the front of my tractor off the ground. My tires are off the ground. Uh, if I would really want to scrape some ice, well, I can manipulate my steering by steering yeah. with my brakes yeah. as, because my steering wheel is no longer working because yeah. my fronts are, are off the tire. 90% of people are gonna have that locked all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it, that's what it's there for. Yeah. There is a dipstick right here. Mm -hmm. So same thing, this is for your hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is you'll just pull this out. You'll keep your rag with you. 
wipe it down and give yourself a check. You make sure your hydraulics right in between the lines right there yeah. and you know you're good. And is that the same kind of oil or different kind of oil? It's hydraulic. So your engine, you have engine oil okay. and then you have a hydraulic. That's controlling your transmission mm -hmm. and it's also controlling all your hydraulics. Okay. It's one reservoir, two separate parts of the tractor. Okay. And how long that might last before needing refill? Oh, it, it, uh, when you need to refill it, you'll see a puddle of hydraulic on the floor. Okay. <laughs> it means you ripped a hose probably. Okay. Once again, I check everything 50 hours, okay. you know, is a good staple for, you know, everything on the tractor. When you're reading this dipstick, you can get some false numbers. So if you see these hydraulic cylinders on their loaders, right? Mm -hmm. If I have that loader all the way up in the air, those cylinders are pulled apart and they fill with hydraulic, right? So if I had my loader all the way up in the air and I, I they're filled with hydraulic and I check that, it's gonna look like it's low. Yeah. Then I fill it up and then I compress those cylinders, yeah. hydraulics coming out of your tractor. So you wanna have your loader pretty much on the okay. ground uh, when you're checking that. It happens a lot of times with excavators. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll have their boom all the way out because yeah. they were greasing and then they check and they find it's low, they top it off and then they compress all that and it goes everywhere. So uh, have your loaders on the ground, you okay. know, when you're checking. Right here, this handle is for your three-point hitch. So if you look behind your tractor, this will raise and lower your three-point hitch. So I can raise and lower implements on the back. If you guys ever do a rake or a blade or mm -hmm. a Harley rake even, whatever it is, you can put it right up down on the ground. How do I move oh, this one? That's kind of just a floating top link. Okay. So it's really not attached. It, it will it will hold your implement so it doesn't fold, fold over. So it's oh, just okay. the arms are what picks it up and down okay. and that just goes along with it. Your PTO, so PTO, power takeoff, it's just the thing that makes something spin, mm -hmm. okay? This is it right here. You'll push in your clutch, turn it on, release your clutch and then bring up your RPM. At, at which point is it going to start to spin? When uh, as soon as you release your clutch, it will start to okay. spin, but it's going to spin at a very slow rotation. Okay. And then you're going to bring that. it up to speed. I always start them at a very slow rotation. That way, if, if it was a brush hog or a tiller and it had something in it, mm -hmm. you're not starting it up mm -hmm. at like a full revolution yeah. um, and damaging your implement yeah. on the back. So I always start, at, start them at a low RPM and bring it up to the speed that it needs to be at. Sounds good. Okay? And then take it off, you're done. Mm -hmm. Most important thing, you got a cup holder, <laughs> all right? And this was your old knob for your loader. So let's go over your loader because this is probably the most fun thing on the tractor. So what you guys had me do was add a third function valve. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is an extra set of hydraulics that runs down the end of the tractor for a plow with a hydraulic cylinder or what's most popular right now is grapples. Mm -hmm. um, this will enable you to open and close a grapple. Okay. So by hitting these two buttons, it will put hydraulic down and it will move your implement, open and close grapples, whatever it is. Okay. All right, and that's right here. And you can actually see these hoses run all the way down and right to here. To hook up your third function valve, mm -hmm. It, you'll have your implement that demands hydraulics. You're hooked on here, like mm -hmm. we showed you with the bucket. Then you'll have a set of hoses that goes from the implement to here, and you click on. Okay. I will tell you, with everybody using different fittings, this is a Pioneer fitting, not a flat face. Okay. And that's what we run through Land Pride uh, because they used to not offer flat face. Mm -hmm. So we have so many tractors out there that don't have flat face on them. So we're, we're sticking with what it's been okay. out forever. But that's a simple, if you do get implements that have different fittings, mm -hmm. it's a simple, just unscrew and put your new fitting on and it'll marry up to okay. these. And these are just dust caps and this mm -hmm. one actually goes in here. So pull back, mm -hmm. put it in and it's locked in. Okay. While we're up in the front, you guys had us add this on. Yeah. Super handy. Uh, bucket rod level indicator. What this does is when your bucket is flat, this bend in the bar, will sit in here. Uh-huh. So that way you don't you don't have to see what's going on in the front. You can just watch this bar and you'll see when it's flat. Now every single person has a different interpretation of what a flat bucket is. I was going to ask you. <laughs> so right here, if when you get this home, find out what you like is flat. 
You know, mm -hmm. maybe you actually want to keep your nose up a little bit if you're trying to grade and not spear in. Mm -hmm. And to adjust that, just release, uh, loosen this bolt and you can slide this rod up and down. Mm -hmm. And you can find where you like is flat when this is in the, in the notch. So and when that goes into the notch, that thing will kind of... Yeah, you'll see down. it. We'll turn it on right now. Okay. That is supposedly a flat bucket oh, right see. there. So you really need to watch this. So you don't watch the level of right. this. Right. You're just watching this going in there. I see. Okay. I don't know why it's so simple and I have a hard time explaining it. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, it's just when this is sitting, supposedly your bucket is okay. flat. I thought that this this angle here is the same angle that the bottom no, bucket is. No, you're just watching this okay. trick right there. Okay. All right. We've gone through what all the handles do. So let's actually play with it so you can actually see okay. what they do. So we want to start up our tractor. You have a seatbelt, you want to put your seatbelt on. So with your loader, as I said, this is muscle memory. Okay. So it's really the more you use it, the more this is all going to make sense. Okay. So if I want to pick up my loader, I'm going to pull back like that and I'll go up. Okay. If I want to put it on the ground, I'm going to put it on the ground. Okay. If I want to curl my bucket, I just scoop something, I can go out or in, in is, up, in is curling it back, okay. out is putting it down. Okay. Okay. So let's put your parking brake on so you don't roll. All right. Now let's have you try it. So I just, there's no right or wrong way. So just figure out what they do. That's great. So you notice when you went hard the first time, it came down a little faster than you wanted yeah, it to. Yeah. And you notice you touched it a little bit lighter and you found that yeah. seat spot. It's just like learning to drive stick. You'll find like the friction point that you actually like mm -hmm. and you'll work within that range. But that's all muscle memory. If you just right. got on there for the first time, it's gonna be herky-jerky yeah. and bouncy. But once you find your sweet spot, you'll be able to work it around in that. How do I know when it's completely on the ground? Uh, you'll know, push down. And now you're on the ground. You can see it kind of level itself out. Yeah. Once you get used to it, you'll give yourself a little bit more RPM. This tractor has enough power where you can do multiple functions at one time. So I can lift and curl, or I can lower and dump by holding it on an angle. So if I want to lift and curl my bucket, I can do both at the same time. You don't have to go down, over, down, okay. over. And the same thing if you're going in so you can find your sweet spots in the in the sides too. Now you got a flat bucket. See your your bars in there. Yeah. Now this tractor also has enough power where you can notice I can pick you off the ground, right? That doesn't work so good for a lot of applications. It works great if you're trying to really dig down and get a pile gone, or you're trying to get underneath a tree to maybe pick it up and break it free. But if you're trying to pull a grade or if you're trying to plow your driveway, doing something like that is going to turn it into a whoop section, right? So there's a little trick you can do, and that's called float. So if you see this handle, if I push lightly, it goes down slowly, right? But what I can do is I can push this handle hard, and what it does is it puts it on the ground. Okay. What's keeping it on the ground is the weight of the bucket and the weight of these arms. So if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to plow my driveway mm -hmm. in October, where we get eight inches of snow, the, the weight is going to dig into your, into your muddy driveway. So you're going to still have to play with this, right? But once my driveway is frozen and I want to plow my driveway, I'll get my bucket flat and I'll just click it up like that into float. Mm -hmm. And it will go up and down with the contours of my road, the ice, the frozen driveway is going to pick it up and put it down. Um, so if you notice, go ahead and, and just push it hard and see how it stays Yeah. that you put it in a float. You can feel it right there okay. and that's locking it in a float. Okay. And like a lot of people will use that, like they've dumped and they just want to put their bucket on the ground. They'll just mm -hmm. hit that and it will just go right down on the ground. Also, another great thing that it's for is when I grade, I use it a lot. So let's say I had like a, a pile of uh, topsoil delivered mm -hmm. 
and I want to backdrag that, or maybe I had stone delivered for yeah. my driveway or, and mulch, I, or, or mulch, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I want to backdrag that. What I will do is me personally, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, but what I'll do a lot of times is I will pick up my tractor, curl my bucket under like that, kind of on an angle, not straight up and down because that will put a lot of vibration on, but kind of on an angle and I'll float it. That will spear it into the pile. Now, as I back up, my pile is getting smaller underneath. And what I can do is I can still roll it out. And it's just like if somebody was spackling or uh, doing sheetrock yeah. and they kind of rolled it out, you're gonna do the same thing. You're just backing up and you just roll it out and it'll make it really nice and smooth for you. This is awesome. Okay. You're getting like the lessons how to do everything. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> there, you know, and everybody does things maybe a little bit different. I'm just telling you what I do well, personally. So yeah, when I'm trying to smooth something out, I'll use the float mm -hmm. because if you have down pressure on you're, and you're backing up, a lot of times your back tires are gonna go over the unevenness, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So then what's happening, you've got down pressure, your bucket's just spearing in from side to side. It'll be really hard to yeah. pull like a smoother grade. So just use your float. It really kind of makes, if you're new, if you're new it makes <laughs> you look a lot better, okay? So I use it a lot um, personally. Also on your loader right here, let's say you're doing tree work right now, right? And you wanna, you don't want to bend over because when you're bending over with your saw like this all day, it hurts your back. Yeah. So you want everything brought up. And that's what's great about those hooks. You can hook onto a tree, pick it off the ground, and that way with your saw, you can just go down and cut them up and you didn't bend over, right? Yeah. If I've got my tra I've got a tree in my bucket and I've got my tractor off and I'm up here working with it, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is like a bird or a dog or an extra neighbor or vicious husband or something <laughs> like that comes up and hits this bucket, they can drop it on you. Okay. The more weight that's in it, the faster it's going to drop on you mm -hmm. too. So if I'm doing mulch or something like that and I've scooped it up and I'm bringing it out to my flowers or if I'm cutting up trees in the bucket, I will leave my bucket up and I'll shovel out of it so I'm not tweaking my back. Yeah. Same thing with cutting trees. But what you want to do is you always want to lock your handle. Mm. So this right here locks out your handle. That way nobody can bump it on you and mm -hmm. nobody can drop it on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, if you're going to be off your tractor and you're going to be up in, with a bucket up in the air, lock it. Yeah. Okay. Probably a stupid question, but picking up logs, is it better to do with a chain on the bucket or with the forks? Forks are always going to make your life a lot easier. Okay. But there's going to be times where like maybe the forks are back here and you just need to move a tree. You can use those chains. Okay. Uh, those hooks that you put on are lifesavers. Mm -hmm. uh, because trying to scoop a tree is very hard. Mm -hmm. It's easy with, easier with a set of forks, but also what can happen is if you're doing it unevenly, yeah. they'll fall off, whatnot. Either one, you're just gonna get, have to get better with it. Okay. So if I have a pile of logs, a lot of times I will scoop it with the forks uh -huh. and pick one up. But if I'm in the middle of the woods and I just need to buck up a tree, I'm not driving all the way back, mm. grabbing my forks to go yeah. in, I'll use the chains on the bucket. Okay. But you'll find what you like to use. Mm -hmm. You know, I can give you tips what I like to do, but you're gonna find what's convenient for you because okay. this is your tractor, not mine. Now let's go over the fun thing. You ever gonna take your loader off? Yes. <laughs> of, oh yeah? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'll put the bucket on, I mean uh, those forks on. That's taking the bucket off. Oh. We're I gonna see. show you how to take, you're gonna take your own loader off right now, okay? You do this, we're gonna take this whole thing off. Just so you can see how it's done once, you'll probably never do okay. it. But you're gonna do it. You can okay. stay right in your seat. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna need you to do is I'm gonna need you to start your tractor up. So raise your uh, raise your loader arms up. How oh, high? Keep on going, I'm lazy. All right, right there, perfect. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna lock this out and no hands on. So if I wanna take this off, I'm going to remove this pin. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to slowly put this down on the ground. Now you have legs and you're going to put your bucket and legs down on the ground at the same time. Just go slowly. Just put them, start putting them down. Yep. Yep, you got it. Now once your legs hit the ground, you'll feel it. 
there you go. Curl your bucket out. Perfect. And put that on the ground too. Perfect, right there. Okay. All right, now what I'll do, because you have your third function valve, I'm gonna disconnect these hoses. Okay. Okay. And these are Those the are, same, not male, female. Right. Okay. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is start your tractor back up. Okay, now what I want you to do is push up and that's gonna pick your front of your tractor right off your ground. Perfect, just like that. Once you pick your tractor off the ground, you release the pressure on these pins uh, and this pin just comes right out. Okay. So now, just remember what I tell you, okay? So what you wanna do is you just, to take it off, you just need to use two ranges of motion. Going straight towards you, puts your tractor on the ground. Yeah. And then once your tractor's on the ground, you'll pull straight back and you'll notice this whole thing comes apart, comes off the tractor. Okay. Okay, so let's start. We're just gonna go straight towards you. So just move it sideways. And you'll notice your tractor goes on the ground. Perfect, right there. And then pull straight back. And you see what's happening right here? Yeah. Okay, keep on coming back. There you go, perfect. Then you'll turn off your tractor. At that point, you're completely disconnected because you'll notice you're not mm -hmm. in your cradle. Yeah. Disconnect your hydraulics right here. Mm -hmm. And these are all just quick, quick disconnects. Yeah. It's probably under a lot of pressure, but just quick get disconnect. Uh -huh. So you'll undo all four. That will all stay with the loader and you have a tractor without a loader on anymore. Okay. You know, if you need to get in the woods for maybe more maneuverability, if you need to get in tight spots and you didn't need your bucket. Okay. On this size tractor, not too many people take their loader on and off all the time, but yeah. you can. So how do we put it back on? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our hydraulic again. If you ever have a hard time connecting your hydraulic, what you wanna do is before they're all connected, bring this around in a circle. And what it does is it bleeds like your hydraulic pressure mm. and it'll make it so they clip in a lot okay. easier, okay? So to take it off, we went two different directions, right? Just yeah. this way and this way. Yeah. What you're gonna do is I always bump my tractor into it. Okay. So you're pretty much bumped in there. So you don't need to move the tractor. Okay. So start up your tractor now. When you're, if you've already had your tractor running, you don't need to worry okay. about your glow plug. Just turn it right on. Okay. okay. So to take it off, we went straight towards you and straight back. Yeah. To put it back on, we're gonna do the opposite. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go away from you, so push towards me, and watch what's happening. So go away from you, oh, okay. and see how it goes yeah. right down in the cradle? Yeah. Once it's in the cradle, mm -hmm. and check both sides, so both sides are in the cradle. Yeah. Then push it straight forward. Yeah, you got it. Until your tractor goes up in the air. Yeah. Oh, Keep more? on going a little bit more. Perfect. At that point, your pins go right in. You want to make sure this goes in this little hole. That yeah. way they can't vibrate yeah. out on you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pick your tractor up off the ground. So I'll go down. So pull back. Oh. Yep. Pick it right up. Now we're just gonna put your legs away, so just pick it right oh, up. Oh, so is it that doesn't need to be connected? No, no, oh, yeah. Okay. okay, perfect. Lock it out. And I would turn off your tractor. Pretty neat system. Now keep in mind I do this every day, all day long. <laughs> So I make it look really easy, but if you just remember that that pattern, it makes it a lot easier. People get screwed up when they're in like, they're trying to do two of them at the same time mm -hmm. to make it faster. I do it herky jerky. I just remember straight over and straight back. It's okay. gonna take it off. So now we can start up our tractor and we can unlock and we can put it on the ground. Perfect. Now we can turn off our tractor. Now we're gonna try and hook up these hoses without bleeding it. I didn't have to, mm -hmm. but if it gave me a real hard time, 
I would simply go like this. While the tractor's on? On or off, it does, mm -hmm. uh, with it off, actually I would do it off. Okay. And same thing, if these gave you a hard time with the tractor off, bring it around in a circle mm -hmm. and then they'll, they'll click in a lot easier. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Good. Yeah? Good, yeah. Cool. You got lights and blinkers. You can take this on the road as long as your, your triangle's on the back with your four ways. This tractor theoretically just came out of a box. Mm -hmm. Everything is paint on paint and it's been bolted on. Now you're gonna get this tractor home and you're gonna start using it. And there's no, there's not really a break in period where you have to baby your tractor okay. at all. So get out there and start using your tractor. Now it is going to settle where it wants to settle. Mm -hmm. Now there could be some rubbing and things can get loose. So what you want to do is you want to check the lugs on your tires. Mm -hmm. Just like if you got new tires put on your truck, you, they, they always tell you to drive a hundred miles and check to make yeah. sure they're torqued correctly yeah. because they can loosen up on you. Mm -hmm. In your manual, it'll tell you to do that. Nobody ever does it. Do it, yeah. you know, check them because the last thing you want to do is be out in the woods and notice that you have one bolt holding yeah. on. Another thing what you want to do is, this is kind of like a cheat that I tell people to do. When you get your tractor home, take like a Sharpie or a grease pen. Mm -hmm. Draw a straight line up and down on these bolts right here. Mm -hmm. And run right here, everything that holds this onto your tractor. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I tell you to do a straight line up and down is because it tells you in the manual to check these like 20 to 30 hours in. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever does it, mm -hmm. all right? But if you're walking by your tractor and you see mm -hmm. one of those lines is turned, yep. you know, you need to tighten it up. Yep. And then you can go and put a wrench on it. And it just keeps you from having to be like underneath your tractor checking things. It's just a little cheat mm -hmm. and it works out great. Some people will do it with their lugs too. They'll do a straight line up and down and then a dot on the rim where the mm -hmm. line is supposed to end. And that way, if the line is ever off your dot, you know you need to tighten them up. Mm -hmm. Your tires are loaded. They're filled about 75% of the way up with beet juice. And what that means is they're filled to about here. Okay. So right now it's warm out. So the pressure's pretty hot in there. Now in change of seasons, when it gets cool, if these tires start looking a little soft and you want to add some air to it, what you want to do is make sure this valve mm. stem is pointed straight down. Yeah. Because if it's down here like that and you hook into it with an air hose, it's coming back out at you. All right, so make sure you're up here. Yeah. And then you can add air to your tires. On the back of your tractor, you've got your three-point hitch. It's a standard category one three-point hitch. Mm -hmm. So anything that says cat one, this will hook onto. If it says cat two, don't hook onto it. It's probably, shouldn't be on there. It's probably too heavy to be on there. So don't, uh, okay. you're not gonna be able to work a cat two, just cat one. There are some cool things with a three point hitch right here, but you've got a lock nut. So if I wanna hook onto a box blade, what I will do is I'll hook onto my box blade. So three point hitch, one point of contact, two point of contact, mm -hmm. three point of contact. If I'm using a box scraper and I wanna go down and I wanna crown my driveway, what I can do is I can actually manipulate this and crank this side mm -hmm. up or down. Mm -hmm. And what it will do is it will cock on my implement. Mm -hmm. That's really like gonna be like your only adjustment other than up or down. Okay. You can manipulate this one also by uh, tilting an implement up or, or mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. um, but this is very handy. Now, once you get your implement actually set, make sure you lock that back down because mm -hmm. the vibration can turn it yeah. and you'll lose what you set. Yeah. With these tires, you've got a bungee cord right here. We're gonna take these off. These are some extra pins for when you're hooking up a, a three-point hitch implement. Mm -hmm. You can lock them on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take those off because they like to get lost in the woods. Mm. And we're gonna put them in your toolbox. What do you generally carry in your toolbox? What do I carry? Um, I will carry pins and then I will also carry an adjustable pair of pliers because there's just some things that you're going to need a pair of pliers for. Like if you want to turn these, if you if your lock nut is on there too mm -hmm. tight and it maybe rusted on a little bit, you want to break it free. So I'll have an adjustable with me. Sometimes if I know I'm going in the woods with my chainsaws, I'll have my chainsaw wrench in there. The stuff I don't want to go back to my garage mm -hmm. and get is in my toolbox, okay. but always uh, an adjustable set of pliers is mm -hmm. back. Bungee, you gotta watch these. See how they're going mm -hmm. out and they're hitting that tire? Yeah. 
that's not good mm -hmm. because what I've seen with the R4 tires is they'll hook this and actually can break down here. So what you want to do is you always want to have these away mm -hmm. from your tires. So that's why your bungees right here, pulling, keeping them away from mm -hmm. your tire. Also, when you get an implement, it's really easy to keep these loose. But once you get your implement on, tighten these down mm. so they're not it's not swaying all over yeah. the place number one to keep you away from the tires and then also if you're trying to pull grade or you're trying to do straight rows it's not flopping mm -hmm. all over the place every time you pick up and put down yeah. uh you have a rubber cap over your rear pto okay. this is just to keep dust off of it because mm -hmm. you do want to keep this greased so you know you're driving through your dust and your sand this is just a rubber cap mm -hmm. Like, and it gets on there pretty tight. That's also another reason I have an adjustable uh, pair of pliers in there mm -hmm. to pull this off. You have a draw bar right here. If it's in your way, there's a pin. You can pull this out. You can make it longer. You can hide it away. And you can also spin it around and put it in um, backwards if you wanted to, to get yourself some different di uh, dimensions. This is your hydraulic fill right here. So that's where you're going to add the hydraulic if you need to top mm -hmm. it off. Just remember, don't go crazy. A little bit of hydraulic on like asphalt or concrete because of how dense it is, it expands, makes it look like you lost a lot more than you really mm. did. Okay. So before you just go crazy adding hydraulic, <laughs> really check it out. All right, and then just screws right on. A lot of people don't know about this secret back here. If I want to flip my seat up, so I'm leaving my tractor outside, I'll flip it up. Now, a lot of people think Kubota rides on just these springs. Actually, we're, uh, the L-Series comes with a, a seat tensioner. Mm -hmm. So for us heavy set guys, if I find myself bottoming out when I'm riding my tractor, I can actually take this T-handle and crank it up and it will give me more resistance. Mm -hmm. You don't want your back bottoming out every time you hit a bump. It would just send a shock up your back mm -hmm. and it makes for a really long day of uh, yep. being on your tractor. So just adjust this, you know, as you see fit. Uh, this tractor does have um, some safety features on it. You've got a seat switch. I can't stand off my tractor and drive it mm -hmm. because it thinks you've fallen off. Mm. You also can't be running your rear PTO and just jump off your tractor and be back here while the PTO is running. Now there are applications where you do need to have your PTO running and you're not gonna be on your tractor, like a wood splitter or a chipper. chipper yeah. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip your seat up and that's saying, oh, okay, right. I'm off my tractor. I know uh -huh. I'm gonna be. Yep. So if you flip your seat up, you can be back here with it running. Otherwise it will stop Other, running? It or will just turn itself turn off and you have to disengage your PTO before you try and start it back up because it doesn't want you to start a tractor mm -hmm. with the PTO just running mm -hmm. willy-nilly because yep. if somebody's around it, yep. you get dangerous. ROP system, rollover protection. Mm -hmm. This is here for your safety. If you need to get it into a garage or you have apple trees that you need to get under, mm -hmm. you can adjust these where you take a, you pull this pin right here mm -hmm. and you unscrew this pin and you can fold your ROPs down, you know, mm -hmm. to bring it down. You always want to have your ROPs up and your seatbelt on because if the tractor ever does tip over, do you want to be trapped in this like safe yeah, bubble yeah. and not being thrown from it? Um, so you can adjust these down. And uh, does it fold only this way or? Yeah, okay. it only folds this way okay. and you can repin. So it basically comes out like that. Does it extend the tractor length then a little bit? Yeah, it does. Okay. The headlights on the front of the tractor with plowing don't work so great and the reason why is because your bucket's going to be going up and down in front of these lights yeah so if you want to add lights to your tractor by all means i've had i've had people add lights on the sides front and back yeah big bars up here add as many lights as you want it, it's great more lights the better but do not drill holes into the rops so if you want to add lights use a u-bolt uh -huh. or a hose clamp and clamp them on and then run your wires down you can actually jump power right up underneath here mm -hmm. or if you buy a kit that comes with a second switch you're going to need to use your battery and you can drill a hole into into the side to add a toggle switch that's fine just do not drill holes into this it will void the warranty okay okay now let's talk about some safety b 
big thing is your loader. They are awesome, super cool, best thing in the world because you're not using your back anymore. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make your property feel a lot smaller, but they can be also very dangerous. So if you're going into like a pile of dirt or a pile of stones, or you picked up that tree, sure, you might wanna pick it up high to break it free. Mm -hmm. But before you start moving your tractor around, put your loader on the ground, basically as close to the ground as you can. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is it will adjust your center of gravity. Mm -hmm. So the higher up it is with all that weight up in the air, a two inch stump with your tires turned all the way, backing up can tip over a tractor. It could be as minute as that. Okay. So if you need to maneuver trees through the woods, keep them on the ground. If okay. you need to pick up stones, keep them on the ground. Mm -hmm. It will also protect you from like hitting something that maybe the loader takes the abuse, but loader has to be on the ground as close as possible mm -hmm. at all times. Okay. There's just so many stories of tractors tipping over and it's always somebody brand new with a tractor. Yeah. It's getting really excited. The loader's up in the air and they're doing donuts on the lawn, <laughs> you know? So just loader on the ground. Okay, can I drive it again? Oh, absolutely. Let's fire it up and play around. Okay, so what was the pedals? Like this, press forward, it goes forward, yeah. press back drives backwards? Yep. And you can also cheat it if you're doing like a lot of loader work. Sometimes I won't pick my foot up and go all the way back. You can pick up underneath the pedal mm. and go in reverse as well. Okay. So it's whatever you like. If I'm going backwards for a long period of time, yeah, I'm shifting my weight in the seat and I am going to step mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, I will a lot of times do something like this. So put your, let's put your seatbelt on. Let's make sure our RPM is down. Yeah. And we can go ahead and fire up the tractor. And then your bucket's kind of like pointed down. I like to run with them like up. Mm -hmm. That way if I do hit something, I'm not digging into it. So a lot of times I'll have my bucket curled up. And then once it's curled up, I'll be able to put it down a little oh, bit yeah. more on the ground. Yeah, I'm always gonna try and run at least like right there. That would okay. be fine. And once again, if you wanna curl it up a little bit more and then you can put it down a little closer. Okay. But you can see it, it's a lot more stable yeah. with it down like that, as opposed to like way up here where like only yeah. a side can shake your tractor. Yeah. So you always wanna be like right down there, okay. see daylight so you're safe. And then go ahead and what gear are you in? Hi, so let me put it into so hey, this is a good learning experience right here. This would have happened to you in the middle of the woods and you would have known what to do and you would have sat there and pulled on the handle. Sometimes, if you've turned off your tractor, if you're trying to shift gears, sometimes this handle won't, will only go into neutral but mm -hmm. will not pull into the next gear. Okay. If that happens, you turn on your tractor, you tap your throttle, mm -hmm. it's in neutral, but even if you were in another gear, you just move it forward. What's happening is, your linkages are getting hung up on each other mm -hmm. and it's not allowing you to go into gear. You should never really be forcing anything with a tractor. If something's not moving smooth, something's kind of wrong. Okay. So on a dirt bike or a four wheeler, we're big enough where we can roll them forward and then we can click them into gear. Mm -hmm. You can't roll this forward and click it into gear. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and start up your tractor. Okay, you're in neutral. You'll just tap on your throttle pedal, okay, and let go. And then you'll notice it goes right into gear, okay? Same thing with four-wheel drive. If you ever notice you can't pull up on it and get into four-wheel drive, actually move your tractor forward a little bit, and then you'll notice you're able to put it right into four-wheel drive, okay? So we're gonna put our seatbelt on. Now you're in medium, so it's a, like that's a good speed. It's not gonna get away from you. But it, if you ever panic, just take your foot off the gas and you're gonna stop. You've driven this once before, yeah. so now you're just able to use more of your handles when you're driving it. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead, take it down and around. You're gonna, you gotta get to work. So keep it running. We gotta take that bucket off. We gotta hook up these oh, okay. forks. Okay. I gotta put you right to work, <laughs> okay? So do me a favor, like go down, spin it around and come right here. And we're gonna take your bucket off and we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna put, hook onto those forks. Now remember you have your bucket rod level indicator that's gonna tell you when it's kind of flat. So we wanna put your bucket on the ground and make it flat. 
Now what we want to do is we want to roll it out. Now, keep on going a little bit further out this way. All right, perfect. And then you can back right up. Now I gave you a really hard angle on purpose because this happens to everybody. What you're gonna try and do is you're gonna take this corner right here and kind of put it in here and then you can push forward and the whole implement will turn to you. Yeah. And then just keep on pushing forward. Okay. You did great. That was excellent. Now just raise your bucket up. Okay. Now curl it in towards you. Yep. Keep on going. All right. Now just lower it down a little bit by pushing forward. Okay. Now I'm going to have you lock these on. So go ahead and turn off your tractor. Oh, a lot of times I'll like step on that or give it a bounce. Cool. Now with these forks, you can adjust them in and out. And what you're going to do is you're going to lift this pin right here and then you're able to slide your forks and then you can relock them and they'll be in place. A lot of times it's just a kick, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. so you use your foot in the center of it uh -huh. and then you can move them in and out. And then you need to be at these notches. You don't have to be. Okay. But that's, this will lock down when it gets into a notch. I see. Gotcha. Okay. And that will lock it in. What uh, happened, you do want to lock them in in case you go to like get under a log and you're <laughs> pushing from the outside. If you don't have them locked in, they can push mm -hmm. the little slide on you. Yeah. Now, if you want to take these off. Slide it to the center. Mm hmm. All right, it has a groove in the bottom. And then pick it off. Yeah. And then you can use one if you needed a spear for like bales or something like that. Yeah. And that's it. So that was awesome, actually. Cool. That was really a good job for first time ever doing it. <laughs> I thought we were going to struggle a little bit. Good teacher. Good teacher. <laughs> but I think you did pretty good. Now, always remember, once you got them locked on, don't ever park your tractor with your implement up. You're just asking mm -hmm. to get hit in the yeah. shins. So always put them down. But... You needed them up to lock it on. What else do you want to do with it? You don't you want to build a house? I do want to build a house. Well, thank you so much for walking me through and, uh, you know, Matt as well. And uh, now we can take it on our land and start uh, doing <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, have some fun with it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Thank you so Definitely. much. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So now the um, tractor will get delivered to our uh, property and uh, we'll see there. So we have the tractor delivered here at our land and uh, the goal for today is just to ride it around up and down and just get comfortable uh, driving it.